In one of the previous exercises, we looked at the asymptotic forms of the Bessel function and the Neumann function. In this exercise, the question is, can you show the following asymptotic expression for our friends, the Henkel functions? And more importantly, can you also use your physical insight to try and explain why we have this factor 1 over the square root of x appearing here? So pause the video to think about this. So what we had from the previous exercise was the following. So these were the asymptotic expansions for the j's and the y's. Now, the only thing we need to do basically is just use the definition of our Henkel functions. So the Henkel function of the first kind of order nu, that's the following linear combination of j and y, like so. And then the Henkel function of the second kind, order nu, is the same, but with a minus sign here in front of this, uh, this j, this imaginary unit. And then we just need to take these particular linear combinations using those asymptotic forms, and then we just get what we need to show just by making use of Euler's identity. So we end up at the cosine of x plus j sine of x, which obviously is going to be exponential jx. And if you have a minus sign here in front of the j, that minus sign will also appear up there. Okay, so that's fairly trivial to derive these expansions, provided, of course, you know the expansions for the j's and the y's, which we assume we do. Over to the next part. What's the deal with this square root of x that appears in all of these equations? That means that the amplitude of our wave goes down as we move further and further away from the origin, from the source. So the question is, why is this happening? Is there perhaps some material there that has absorption, which causes then this uh, decrease in amplitude? But that can't really be the answer, right? Because the same thing will also happen in vacuum, which doesn't have any absorption. So the reason the amplitude goes down must be something else, must be something more fundamental. Let's try and see what happens. So at the origin, we have some sort of line source which radiates and sends out a cylindrical wave. Obviously, what needs to be true is conservation of energy, right? And that means conservation of total energy. So let's say we look at the total energy that flows through this cylinder over here. Then, by virtue of that conservation law, that same energy also has to flow through that bigger cylinder over there. Now, obviously, because that second cylinder is much bigger, it also means that the energy gets spread out over a much larger area and therefore the amplitude goes down. So this is the intuition why we have this decrease in amplitude. But we can go one step further and actually calculate how our intensity should go down um, just by making use of what we know from solving Maxwell's equations. We know that the field either electric or magnetic, will be proportional to a Henkel function. And in this case, a Henkel function of the second kind, because we have an outgoing wave here that's being radiated towards infinity. So our field scales as the Henkel function. Can we now calculate roughly the total energy that flows through uh, this cylinder here? Well, obviously, that's going to be proportional uh, to this field squared. And if we assume that we have a rotational symmetry here for the fields, we're just going to say that, okay, our uh, power here is constant at all of the different points along our cylinder. So if we want to calculate the flux through that cylinder, we're just going to, to take the field squared and then multiply that by the circumference of that cylinder, which is going to be 2 pi r. Obviously, there's plenty of prefactors over there, but we're not going to worry about these, uh, these prefactors. The important part here is that that flux is constant and does not depend on the radius of our cylinder. Now we just fill out that we know that the field is actually proportional to our Henkel function. And then we square that. That's a bit awkward with these two squares here. So 2 pi r equal to a constant. But if that's true, 
then we can just easily derive that our Henkel function itself, so Henkel function of the second kind, is proportional to 1 over the square root of x. So we could have derived that purely based on mathematics when we were developing this uh, asymptotic expansion. Uh, but now, based on the physics of the problem, we can also understand that this is very plausible indeed.